Okay, hello. My name is Peter, Peter Draws, and I am happy to announce that I have just finished my first year of interior architecture school at UNCG. And so I guess I'm technically a sophomore now, even though I think I went into it with enough credits to be maybe a junior because I went to school before like 10 years ago. It's complicated. Anyways, first year done. And this is the sketchbook that I used the whole first year. Um, there were a lot of big projects that we did. Uh, the entirety of these projects aren't in here. Usually just like the first steps, like the planning, sketching, I ideation parts of the projects are in here. A lot of doodling, absent-minded as I sat there. Uh, a lot of the times the professors would like talk to us and I would take some notes and do a lot of drawing and doodling. And sometimes there are assignments to do drawings in here. And then at certain times, like halfway through the semester, at the end of the semester, we would hand it in. They would flip through it just to see if we were uh, keeping up and stuff like that. But anyways, let's take a look and I'll show you what we what I did in the past year in the sketchbook. All right. All right, here it is. It comes with a nice uh, orange ribbon. It also comes with a little like elastic thing you can put around it like this if you want to. I didn't usually do that. It's all right. If you want to know what brand this is, it is a handbook brand sketchbook. I think it's made by Speedball. Um, here in the beginning it says I wrote the beginning, August 21st, 2019. That's when I first started this. And then here you can see I wrote pointless rant and then I wrote dumb over it. You know how in those uh, the first days of school you go over the syllabus and then uh, at least in my school they gave you the uh, academic integrity policy and it's like the terms and conditions where they they just want you to check off that you read it but like the terms and conditions I mean the academic integrity policy is like 20 pages long and they hand it to you and they want you to sign off that you did it all at the same time and no one actually reads it and it's just all sort of ridiculous and and I got kind of fed up with it and I wrote this whole big rant and then I then I was like why am I writing this whole rant it's all pointless and anyways disregard all of this and then here I started taking notes first day of real class analytic associative intuitive pragmatic thinking etc let's move on here's some sketching and thinking and note taking I did for my first project. Okay, so some of my first projects at school, I would also made YouTube videos for them, but then I got overwhelmed of having to do the projects. And then I was also giving myself like twice as much work, you know, making videos of my projects and then having to edit the videos and all this. So then I stopped. Okay. But anyway, so you might recognize some of this might look familiar is all I'm saying. The leaf project. So this is also you might see a lot more pencil than you're used to seeing from me because I, historically I have used a lot of pen. All right, so here's a lot of like little thumbnail sketches, and a lot of this is assignments for school. But then you'll also notice that mixed in with all the assignments for school, all the notes I take, you'll see a lot of little doodles, right? Because I sit there and the professors talk, I get really bored and I mix in notes with doodles. Um, you know, they're just like me right here. For example, I wrote two inches, two inches, six X. I don't know what that meant. You know, I wrote down someone's name here. Perception, gestalt. Is it, how do you say that? Gestalt, gestalt, who knows? So on and so forth. Here's some blind contour drawing practice where I I wasn't looking at the paper, I was only looking at the subject of what I was drawing and then drawing here on the paper. So on and so forth. Some more little drawings of uh, flows of the different ways design can flow across itself, I guess. There's a there's a there's a rich variety of things that were assigned to me and told to me to do and things that I just kind of Put here because I was sitting there not doing anything else except listening. Like I think this was an assignment too. Here in class we were supposed to do a little diagram of how shoelaces work. Just off the top of our head. 
So you got this pages. Oh, I think we're supposed to fold this page at one point to get a 45 degree angle for this. I don't remember exactly. I think at one point we were told to draw a shoe to tell it so that we would realize maybe how difficult it could be to draw a shoe. Maybe sometimes you don't realize how difficult some things are until you try it. I don't know. Also, we had some assignments throughout the semester. This is all first semester still. Um, just to like draw various things. I think that's where this guitar and this coat came from. Here's some little ideas about starting with like the basic shapes of a shirt and then the how it fits around someone's body and then you know some of the shading. See I make little notes like as I hear something that sticks in my brain I write it down water supply equals land area times amount of precipitation but then the rest of it is just like me making doodles and stuff like I normally do. Here I wrote a visual note as we were learning about harmony and dissonance, or maybe this is like sort of like visual balance. That's what this little thing is, and the rest of it I was just drawing. So on and so forth. Harmony and dissonance was another big project we had throughout the semester. Another rich uh, combination of ink and pencil. Here is where, so this is the only place pretty much in the whole sketchbook where someone else wrote in my sketchbook. Uh, that's hard to forgive, honestly. They, I was like, I was, I think I asked, like, how do I even draw dissonance? And they took the pencil from me and just scribbled here. I mean, it's a good example of scribbling, I guess, but you, you don't just draw in someone else's sketchbook without asking. So we had some assignments, you know, like we had to draw tools, you know, so I drew my Leatherman on desk, sunlit. I had to make like a little note of what was happening. And here's some little sketchbooks, I mean little preliminary sketches I made of uh, some paper models with skewers I ended up making. You might have noticed, I mean, I think finished products of all these are posted on my Instagram. This is a, I like this little diagram. Some more of the sketch models, I mean, sketches for models that I ended up making here, here. This, these are different views of this. Here's some more gestalt properties or principles. Sketch out in the park. I like these little mind maps. I did a video on this, I'm pretty sure, of how to do a mind map. I don't know if you remember that at all. I like these though, because it just shows that I appreciate how this shows that everything really is related. Because these can really keep on expanding and you can keep on either expanding or zooming in and elaborating on any aspect of this that you want to, almost infinitely. Everything's related to everything. There's another drawing assignment. I think maybe the assignment here was to draw Maybe something made out of glass, or maybe it was just to draw a jar, I don't know. Once again, more a combination of just doodling and, and notes. Because our, our studio time was kind of a, usually a mixture. We'd go in for maybe a few hours every day, maybe like four hours, and we would maybe meet and talk for an hour or two, depending on the day. An hour or two of like the professors talking to us, telling us stuff chatting with them, which is when I would take these notes and doodle, and then we would go work on our projects in the studio, stuff like that. Here's a sketch of a dream I had, which you'll see, this will tie into some other projects later. Little rooms, and there are like some tunnels I was crawling through. Sketch of the parking lot outside the studio window outside of this studio window. Some more notes. Christopher Alexander, who's a, an, an author who we took a lot of notes from. Here's a, a, a chair that I was just trying to design in my own time, but I think it got a little dangerous because like, what if I got my fingers? This is like too much hinge action, too much finger clipping, I didn't want to lose a finger in this 
whatever is going on here. It kind of reminds me of clippers for hair also. Oh yeah, 15 properties. These are all by Christopher Alexander too. You can see I took notes, took little graphic notes, levels of scale, strong centers, boundaries, alternating repetition, positive space, good shape, local symmetry, deep interlock and ambiguity, contrast, gradient, roughness, echoes, the void, simplicity and inner calm, and not separateness. And then, of course, just a, sometimes I have big doodles like this, and I think maybe this, like here, is probably one of the first, like, little thumbnail doodles that I started doing. And you'll see these a lot later in the sketchbook, kind of just filling up whole pages with these little size of um, doodles. Maybe, maybe the first one might be here too. I'm not really paying attention enough to know where it really started, but I kind of fell in love with those. And here, this is the project sketches for a, a big paper mache almost model that I did of a, a dream vessel it was supposed to be, which ties back in with this drawing of my dream. Where I was supposed to, like the outside is me and the inside is my dreams. It's hard to explain, which is probably a bad sign. And here's me trying to practice like some little graffiti lettering or something. I don't know. Here's mixed ink and, and graphite. Here's some more of the dream vessel. You can see here I wrote, I, would, I labeled some parts of it. I really wanted to label stuff, but sometimes I didn't know what to write, so I just wrote some of my fake language. <laughs> just wrote nothing. Some more notes, some more of the dream vessel. You can see here I was just writing a little notes on what the assignment was, what the requirements for the assignment was. See here I wrote, uh, but I labeled parts of this one with like the opposite of what maybe good design was. Like these are all like maybe things that would make something urban hell, congested transit, scattered utilities, ultra high density housing, cluttered commerce, ambiguous boundaries, distinct lack of old people, homogenous nucleus, designated dancing areas. Okay, maybe that is good. But maybe that's bad. You should be able to dance wherever you want. Plenty of red tape. Suboptimal suburbs. Next, see, so, so here's some drawings of buildings. These two I drew from my mind, and these other drawings I drew from reference. And I think it's clear to see these four, these ones, which I drew from reference, are way better drawings. But still, for some reason, I. I'm reluctant to draw from reference, even though it, the results are way better. Here you can start to see me doing a lot more of these thumbnail sketches. Some more notes here, thumbnail sketches, long. I think these still would consider, I would consider these thumbnail doodle sketches, even though they're stretched out very widely, horizontally. Here's some little sketches of people in my class during a lecture. This is the beginning of another project on light, where we had to observe a light phenomenon. And the phenomenon I observed was 9 a.m. morning steam backlit by the sun, where there was a building here and a pipe, and then there was steam coming out. And there's a dark background, because all this is in shadow, but then there's the sun, the early morning sun was slanting in this way, and just totally illuminating this cloud of steam that was coming out of this pipe and I was very entranced by it and I kind of tried to capture that in the drawing a little bit which was hard to do of course because it's well it's just hard to do for some reason maybe if I get better at drawing I get better at that but I kind of took this and run with it for the rest of a big project which you might see later um, here's some more drawing assignments which were I think maybe to draw a motorcycle to draw a chair I don't think this is an assignment Thumbnail. 
this was where we had, there was like a kiosk in the studio, which we had to take measurements of and do like a very precise um, multi-view diagram of. And this is not the precise diagram of, this is just me doing a little, a little sketch where I was writing down all the measurements I could take of it. I, I went over there with my, uh, with my tape measure and I was taking all my little measurements and stuff. Or thumbnail sketches. Well, kind of runes or something, fake language. Another drawing from reference, Bob Van Reith. Bob Van Reith, I think. I was looking at a picture in a book, I think. And this is more of the light project where we 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 captured we we were in inspired by a light phenomenon, right? And then we had we were all assigned a window in the studio and we had to play with the light coming through the window, make something in the window, right? And I wanted to, I, I remembered the, the steam, how the light shone through it and how the steam was illuminated by the light. And so I thought maybe if I took a bunch of shards of plexiglass and somehow suspended them in the window, uh, the light would go through it and there would be this cool phenomenon. So maybe if it was suddenly like there was a pane of glass and it was, in the middle of shattering and it was like suspended time, something frozen in time, or maybe if it was like a very sharp frozen crystalline crowd cloud. I don't know. So I had, had some different ideas here. I was trying to sketch out some more doodles, drawings, orbital parking lot here. Uh, this is kind of a little precursor to those space station projects I was doing here on YouTube later. And here you can see one of my projects, I mean, little not pro um, problems I have with doing so much pencil work is I don't like how so much of the pencil transfers from one page over to the other. And it makes this page look messy, you know. Now my fingers get all messy. It just doesn't stay on the paper. I guess I could spray it with some fixative, but I don't know. I just don't like doing that either. It makes, it, it makes the pap paper feel weird, and it's just all so weird. Some more drawings, not for class, just uh, here's a top-down view, like a map or a layout of a city I thought up off the top of my head. Most of these, all the ink in this book is the uh, Muji fountain pen, just like my daily carry fountain pen that I like carrying around with me everywhere. And then all the pencil that you see is probably one of these two lead holders, which I carried around with me everywhere. Most of this one first, I think I bought this pencil uh, sometime during the school year. This is like a weird little fungus head thing. It's like eyes, mouth, arm, butterfly, mushroom. More pencil sketches, more pencil getting messy and transferring from page to page. And here's a bunch more thumbnail sketches I me mean, just i just drew a bunch of boxes i drew some different size boxes and just played with it's just less intimidating when it's just you just have like a square inch right yeah i like that oh here is the album to my i mean the that the album art for my lit look, most recent album on spotify hole poker i did the line work here and then i scanned it in and digitally colored it and then after I scanned it in, I came back here and shaded it in a little bit with, with pencil. Here's some very tall little doodles. Kind of skinny. Scale X. Here's some notes from a Scale X, like a little conference I went to about interior design and stuff like that. Or doodles. And this is a continuation of the light project where after we made a, a window fixture, we had to make a lamp. This is me kind of planning that out a little bit where I, my idea was to make a little bulb in the middle. Instead of having a, a thing that was lit by light coming from somewhere else, I wanted it to be lit from the center. And so I had a bunch of unlit bulbs lit from a center bulb hanging in the middle. And then I just had this weird little fixture, and uh, I think I might have posted a picture of that, the final project, the final thing on Instagram also. 
some more of my made up language that I post here. I don't know why I like doing that so much, but I, but I do. I think this is another drawing assignment. I was looking out of a window, drawing the window, what's directly outside of it, but also the reflection in it. Cause there's all these, all these light fixtures hanging on the ceiling above me, behind me. I don't know. It's hard to explain. Also hard to draw. Now I like these deep chairs. These still entertain me in my head because they're totally impractical. I mean, it's a, look, it's a totally regular long table uh, and the chairs are totally normal except, you know, except for having like a back that's like one inch thick. It's like five feet thick. And it doesn't make any sense because like the people here on the, in the middle of the table, I don't even know how they would get into their chairs except for like crawling over their chairs. But it just, I like how it looks. I like how it feels. I like how it doesn't make any sense, but something about it really makes me happy. I like these too. Some more doodles, labeling things with words. I guess I was learning. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I think this was me not doing very well with uh, perspective drawing. I think I was trying to figure that out. You can see here I labeled it disaster. Draw the guidelines first. Don't try to wing it. Oh yeah, yeah. I think this is a Tate Street Coffee uh, on near campus in Greensboro. I you can see I I really should have drawn the guidelines first and just instead of just trying to wing it like I normally do. And here you can see another a great example of everything on this page transferring over onto this page, because this page is almost empty compared to this page. But I drew on this page, and then I turn this page and drew on this page, and it's like carbon paper. It's like transfer paper, right? I drew, I pressed down hard, which transferred all this stuff over onto this side, which is pretty annoying to me. But I guess it's just, I don't know, just how it goes. More thumbnail doodles. I like these a lot. Weird little chair. This is a like a little sketch of a weird sculpture I saw at the at the museum on campus called the Weatherspoon Museum. I think this is too. Oh, these are also a sculpture there. Uh, I finally, I later turned these into a more polished drawing, which I think is on Instagram. This is a, a scene at the park. This guy, Daniel, what a dude. He sat across from me first semester. Good guy. Just some more, uh, oh yeah, firmness, commodity, delight. The trifecta. I'm just practicing. I don't know what I was doing here. Just enjoying. I was just having a good time. This is me having a really good time right here. That's what that is. Oh yeah, yeah, here, here. We uh, had to critique some of our classmates' work. And here you can see some uh, art assignments we had for my art history and design class. Week one, it was just a local building on, on campus. And then later on, uh, the weeks go kind of through through time. Here we were designing a like an entranceway to an oncology clinic, I think. Once again, all of this stuff, you'll ju you just see the beginning. Like, it really is just a sketchbook, right? You just see the beginning of these projects. And then the rest of the... This is like the beginning 10, 15% of the project and like the rest of it is on bigger, nicer standalone pieces of paper or digital, you know, or their big sculptures or whatever. Oh yeah, here's me figuring out perspective and vanishing points a little better. Here's more of the foyer or the entranceway. Here's a prehistoric, prehistoric buildings. Oh yeah, here's ancient Egypt. Prehistoric. They're, they're a little out of order. Here's week three, and then here's week two. Some more 
ideations for the entrance way. See, this is a this is mislabeled. For week four, I wrote ancient Aegean, and then I drew this arch of Septimus Severus, which you can see here. I wrote Rome, Italy, but ancient Aegean, the Aegean Sea is like where Greece is, not Rome. And you see later here, I, I drew something else in Rome. So I really I, I drew two Roman buildings and no Greek buildings. Hopefully, I don't get anything any marks taken off for that. I haven't gotten any grades back for anything this semester yet because. Um, of the whole COVID thing, they've pushed back all the all the deadlines really far. So I don't know how I did. So here's the beginning of a project called Temple for Human Consciousness, where pretty much had to build a temple for human consciousness. Oh, here's the big, here's how my kind of final design for that entrance way. You can see the two views, the front and the side. And here's the kind of me thinking of a a color scheme for it also. But, but one of my biggest inspirations for the Temple for Human Consciousness was not to really make a temple, like a building at all, but, but you know the uh, Cloud Gate by, uh, what's his name, Anish Kapoor? Uh, I think it's, it's, you know, most of us call it the bean in Chicago, that big chrome bean. It's like a sculpture, but you can go in it and around it and that's also kind of a temple of human consciousness to me. You go in it, you see yourself. It's a very reflective space, literally, but also mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Uh, so that was kind of, an, you'll see more of that here as we go on. See more of the, me experimenting with more shapes, ideas. As far as the temple goes, a shape you can go into, underneath, and around experience the, the the building the sculpture the thing but also maybe learn a little bit something about yourself here's a classical forms on campus the front of the library on campus and a bunch of these next pages are just me doing a bunch of sketches for this temple I mean, trying to figure out the different ways that could have like maybe a little bit of momentum or a little bit of weight and heaviness, lightness, pressure at one point, right? Uh, the different feelings that you could get being in it or just looking at it. Maybe you'd be afraid to go under it. Maybe you'd feel good under it. Maybe you'd feel bad under it. Maybe you'd feel a little bit comforted underneath it. You'd feel safe there. Maybe the, the space on top here represents the world. Maybe it represents all your feelings. Maybe this is the space, you know, that you can control all the things you can control in your life here. And this is uh, on top here. This is all the things in your life you can't control on top. Just some more notes here. More stuff transferring from one page over to the other. You can see here I was doing some more little sketches and... Uh, very conveniently, the last one was the one that I liked the most. Here's some top-down views I was making, little courtyard ideas. And, of course, I fleshed this all out in, like, a big, I made digital uh, 3D renderings, you know, made drafts, you know, like, nice polished drafts of it and everything. And it's all in, like, I have, like, I turned in, like, a big 24-page PDF of it and everything. And the only way I thought to share this was on, I shared all of my turned-in finished projects on Patreon, which just costs $1 if you want to look at all my finished turned in school projects. Thank you to everyone who follows me on Patreon or supports me there. What's it called? Patri patron patrons me? Thank you. I just don't know where else to share 24 page PDFs, right? I can't share them on Instagram or YouTube or uh, where else is there? I don't know. So thank you to everyone. Who does that? Some more notes. I think I was just trying to make like a little weird house here. I don't know. Terracotta amphora. It's like a little vase that they would have. Sometimes they would have these just be totally pointed on the bottom and then they just stick them down in the sand, I think. Or in little grates that they would make for them. And just have like racks of them. 
Some more assignments. See, oh yeah, so week number six, early Roman Republic. Boom, another Roman building, even though I already had another Roman. So I have two Roman buildings and no Greek one. Look at me go. So basically the idea here is that I would do a sketch of the building and then kind of analyze it a little bit as far as the symmetry, the flow, the basic shapes that construct it, and you know, the symmetry, stuff like that. Now, how is this word? I feel like I did do a video showing me draw a bunch of these buildings, right? And then people told me that maybe this is pronounced Hagia Sophia or something like that. Maybe I feel like I learned and then forgot, which I apologize for. Florence Cathedral, a weird chair for the chair class. Uh, oh yeah, wait. Yeah, this, this goes, this is the same as this, right? This also is another, f this is part of another project called Form. I had, to, I had to turn this into like a building that people could walk through and everything. That's part of another project I think I posted on Patreon. Here's the part, this is for the chair class, whereas the chair class is supposed to be us making chairs, but then, you know, school closed and it went online so it all became very philosophical so i ended up drawing people without chairs and then that's the end of the sketchbook having about 10 empty pages at the end feels like an apt representation of how school ended but the first the first part of the sketchbook the first 110 120 pages uh, I'm really happy with. It's very satisfying for me to look through. So, thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, let me put that on there. And uh, that's one year down. Anyways, hope you're all having a good one. Uh, anyways, I don't know what else to say except thank you and goodbye. And yeah, that's it.